Hi, welcome back to this uh, series of videos on uh, fitting uh, regression models and particularly fitting them in R. Uh, in our last video, we talked about how to fit simple univariate regressions in R. Uh, in this video, I want to move on from simple univariate regressions uh, to the idea of multiple regressions. And, and multiple regressions are models where you are fitting uh, a y variable as a function of a, a linear model of more than one x. Right, and so they would be typically written out as a form of, say, like an intercept plus slope x1 plus a different slope x2 and so on. Difference plus different slope x3 plus different slope x4. And uh, this has the form of a, a linear equation. It's worth noting, as this figure actually illustrates, that once you write down uh, a model in more than uh, you know, one dimension, you're, what you're actually doing is fitting uh, a plane to a multivariate uh, data space. So in, in this case, if I have, you know, an, an x1 and x2, I'm actually trying to describe, uh, you know, a straight line in, in the x direction, a straight down line in the, x, the y, x1 direction, a straight line in the x2 direction, added together, together actually describe the plane. So I'm, I'm now trying to minimize the error uh, between this this response surface, this plane, and the observed data, um, which is kind of cool. Um, so, the the mathematical equation for this uh, is this is you know very similar. We're just adding other terms. You know, we're, we're still making an assumption. All the assum assumptions that we had of univariate regression still hold. Uh, the actual way of fitting this in R gets very very little additional complexity. Um, but there's a couple of key things we want to d dive into uh, before we do this. So the thing, one of the first things we want to do before proposing models that have multiple predictor variables is to look at uh, how those predictor variables are related to each other. Uh, and this is to assess something called collinearity. And collinearity is the idea of, of whether our, our x variables are correlated with each other. Uh, and we want to avoid collinearity because you know, the, the estimates of the parameters we get back, if uh, our variables are, are extremely highly correlated with each other, uh, can some, be somewhat meaningless. You know, we can overestimate uh, the information we're getting out of a model if we're putting in things that are, are not really telling us new things. And I kind of, early, in one of the earlier videos, gave the example. If I put it, uh, if I have one variable x and I call it x1, and I have another variable, x2 that I'm just going to get by multiplying x1 by the number 2, I can put them both in and by themselves are both going to be good predictors of, you know, they might be good predictors of y, but if I put them both in, um, you know, what I'm going to get out is kind of nonsense because they're not really telling me different things. They're telling me literally the exact same information about uh, the relationship between x and, and y. I can put one of them in, but if I put both of them in, I'm liable to get you know, really wacky estimates. Uh, in the true case, when I put them both in, if they're just multiplicatively different, you know, the, 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 yeah, you're not going to get sensible estimates. That said, rarely do you have two variables that are completely confounded like that, but it is still good to look and understand, uh, are, my, are my variables telling me different things? And likewise, to also think about this a little bit causally, like, is, am I seeing you know, is x2 a good predictor of uh, y because x2 is actually predicted from x1? Uh, you know, in which case, again, it's not telling me any additional information. So here's what, what I've done here is made what's called a pairs plot. I think we talked about these in the visualization lectures where I've passed in the, you know, the matrix of the data, this set here that's the second argument in the uh, square brackets is, is just a character, you know, a, a vector of the names of variables I was interested in. So I just wrote out, you know, set equals C colon, you know, TA comma wind speed comma VPD comma so water content comma RG, RDL, and just passed those column names uh, in. So it just gave me those columns and it made up all the pairwise scatter points, scatter plots. And we can see from these pairwise scatter plots uh, that there are some relationships that appear to be <clears throat> um, pretty independent. You know, you look at the relationship between airspeed 
uh, uh, wind speed and air temperature, and it's just kind of a, a cloud, you know, a cloud that doesn't suggest that there's much relationship between the two. And the other extreme, there's things like the relationship between air temperature and long wave radiation, long wave again being the thermal radiation uh, from the atmosphere um, that, that appear to be very tightly related. Uh, the, the, to the extent that this might be something I might be worried about uh, including. And, and then similarly, um, there's a bit of a, uh, yeah, there's some other relationships. Uh, VPD and air temperature is another one uh, where it's not a straight line, it's nonlinear, but there does kind of be this kind of clear shape to the data. And actually, the one of the things that underlies that is that you know, when I defined vapor pressure deficit is the difference between the the saturation vapor pressure, which is the one at 100% humidity, and the air, the vapor pressure in the atmosphere. Well, the saturation vapor pressure is directly calculated from air temperature. So if half of what goes into VPD is a, a literally a, a physical equation uh, def describing uh, the relationship between vapor pressure at saturation and air temperature, that kind of is kind of why this has uh, kind of this uh, Defined bound because it's physically impossible uh, at you know at low air temperatures to have a VPD that's high <laughs> because the saturation is is less than that. Cool. Uh, the other thing that can be handy to do to assess collinear collinearity is to calculate uh, uh, correlation coefficients, and uh, so here is just the the matrix of correlations, and I flagged. Uh, the three that jump out at me is worth thinking about. Uh, there's no strict threshold that says, you know, above this, you have to drop a variable, or below this, you're completely safe. It's more continuum. The more correlated two variables are, the more you need to uh, think carefully about including them. Uh, and so with this, uh, with air speed, uh, air temperature and long wave, the correlation coefficient is, is 0.8. That's pretty strong. That might be one that I uh, would be a bit hesitant uh, to put both of them in because they might not be telling me something different uh, between uh, RG, which is solar radiation and uh, vapor pressure deficit, it's 0.6. Uh, weaker, but um, still maybe worth thinking about or at least paying attention to. And then VPD and air temperature at uh, about 0.5. Again, uh, not, not necessarily fatal, uh, but something you would want to be aware of uh, when building your model and interpreting your model and choosing how to build up more complex models. Okay. In the next lecture, I'm going to talk a, a little bit more about how we then go about building up more complex models.